Hogenbau spring capsule einsetzen. Ugh, man, this is worse than Russian. This video is brought to you by Sportsman's Guide, your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Check them out at www.sportsmansguide.com. Howdy folks, welcome to another video here at Ordnance Lab. Y'all been asking for what? We've been doing this for almost two years now. Y'all been asking forever, the whole time for slow motion stuff. So, huh, let's see what kind of toy that I bought Jake for Christmas. Oh hey, what's going on guys? Well, I can see you can see my new toy I got here. Well, our new toy. Uh, you know, it's property of Ordnance Lab, but I take care of it. And I think it's pretty nice, don't you think? This is the Cron Technology uh, Kronos 2.1 camera. It's a high-speed camera. And this thing can do some impressive video capability in slow motion. It's a high-speed camera. And by high speed, I mean it captures an insanely high frame rate. So this thing can go up to like 5,000 frames a second, sometimes more, but we have to lower the resolution. But for a usable resolution, we're shooting it around two to 3,000 frames a second. This gives us some outstanding data. We can actually slow down these explosions and we can also slow down um, fragmentation, projectiles, stuff like that. So we wanna see, you know, what can it do? So we have a series of explosions we have prepared for you and we can watch it in slow motion, really enjoy that buttery goodness that is, you know, slowing it down and watching everything blow up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set off a series of charges and see how it performs. So let's go over and take a look at the first charge. Today we are filming at our Area 51 Site B location. Looks a lot different than our main site and for good reason. The other place has a giant hole in it where we blew up the Moab. So we need to do a little maintenance before we can start using the range again. Assuming we don't make the hole bigger. I'm just kidding, we're totally gonna make the hole bigger. First order of business is to remove this wee satch tree. These suckers are a nuisance at the range and always cause a whole bunch of problems. Much like that boomer RSO that's eyeballing your brass. You know who you are. It's also in the way of the cameras, so it's got to go. At first we were going to chop it down, but then we were like, nah, let's blow it up. So we prepared a 250 gram tree removal charge to get the job done. Way more fun than digging. We place the charge right in the center of the tree to ensure it gets turned into mulch. Meet Charlotte. While cleaning out the tree debris, we found what we believe is a green lynx spider. We're not sure as we're not arachnologists. Yes, that's a thing. So if you can identify what it is, please tell us in the comments. Anyways, we moved her to a new spot so she can go on and remove more insects for us. Go forth, Charlotte. Do great things. All right, back to the matter at hand. The tree, it's obviously kaput, so we can move on to the fun stuff, filming explosions. We made this stand to prop up the charge so you can better see the explosion on camera. The explosions kick up a lot of dirt and debris which occludes the blast. Our first charge is 200 grams of our in-house made black powder with a 20 gram flash powder detonator. This should give us a nice dramatic explosion that rivals an Hispanic soap opera fight, like the ones my mom loves to watch. Ready to fire. The GoPro here was recording at 120 frames a second. We slowed it down by four times to give a comparison to the high-speed camera's detail and frame rate. The GoPro does an okay job, but 120 frames a second isn't much when recording explosions, even something as slow burning as black powder. The Kronos camera was recording at over 2000 frames a second and was able to capture this amazing slow motion video of the explosion. You can see the explosion propagate from the container then throw debris everywhere. To quote the great poets, Bill and Ted, excellent. excellent! We can see that ground zero is littered with wood fragments and flattened grass. Not a bad performance from the black powder charge though. 
Time to escalate the show here. This requires a bit more work on the range. Sean grabbed two T-posts and the trusty T-post driver for our next blast. We place the T-posts about two meters apart, or roughly two yards. For those of you that don't use the metric system, a meter is approximately a yard. So if you get confused, well, there's your comparison. Then we tied some line across the two. Well, I was an Eagle Scout, but got to confess, my knot skills are not exactly that great, and I haven't tied knots since I think uh, <laughs> mountain phase of Ranger School in what 2000 freaking nine. So it's been a day or two. Let's see if I can get these knots done right, though. So why do all this? Well, to detonate this bad boy, the pineapple grenade. Known as the Mark II grenade by the US military and entered service in 1918. Called a pineapple grenade because, well, it looks like a pineapple. Go figure. This little gem is filled with 65 grams of high explosive and packs a serious punch. We inserted an electric blasting cap through the fuse head to get an explosion as close as possible to a clone correct grenade. Then we tied a line to the neck of the grenade. Apparently this grenade is into scarfing. If you don't know what it is, well, look it up. This will allow us to get a clear view of the explosion versus setting it off on the ground. A surface detonation would result in a ton of debris getting kicked up and occluding the site of the explosion. We can also get a better view of the shrapnel that gets thrown towards the ground. Slowing down the GoPro shows the grenade throwing shrapnel across a wide area. A solid demonstration of how much area such a small explosive device can cover with deadly shrapnel. The Kronos camera recorded an impressive detonation from the grenade. You can see small bits of the hull metal that were thrown into the air and burning white hot. What is really amazing is this lengthy video segment occurred in just a fraction of a second. The blast site looks about the same as before as the explosion wasn't near the ground. To keep up with the grenade theme, let's test out our new item we are developing here, the German stick hand grenade. This required a bit more range attention as we needed to build a special mount for the grenade. So we began digging a hole for the mount. Then I remembered I'm not a mole and said nah to digging. I prepared another 250 gram explosive charge to make this hole just the right size. So I jammed it in there as I always do and then lit the fuse. As always, explosive solves most of life's problems. From moving Earth to divorce, 50% of the time it works every time as the answer. Now, let's take a look at our next party favor. I don't speak German as that is Sean's thing and not mine, so I'm going to butcher this, but Steilhangonate, or stick hand grenade. This funky kitchen utensil was the main grenade for the German armies of World War I and World War II. It had a friction ignition system with a 4-5 to five second fuse and a whopping 180 gram TNT charge. Nicknamed the potato masher as it literally looks like you could mash potatoes with it. Just don't though, it's not a good idea. We tried it. We mounted the grenade into this wood block so we can ignite the grenade from a safe distance. Instead of a 4 second fuse, we increased it to 10 seconds for safety reasons. So unlike traditional grenades which use a self-igniting system, the stick hand grenade has a pull ring system. And this is probably rather unique is because it has a longer fuse and it requires the soldier or user to set it off by pulling this. And up here, right about here, is the ignition system, which is basically a pyrotechnic ignition, similar to what is used for, say, any other fuse ignition system with a friction igniter. And then in here is the main charge and the blasting cap is deep inside. To initiate the grenade, we tied a line to the pull ignition system of the grenade and ran the line across the T-post. That way, the tension is in line with the grenade ignition system. Once Allie was done with her lab analysis of the range, we were ready to test out the prototype. To demonstrate the friction igniter function as designed, and that we weren't faking it, the first video will have the full burn of the fuse. The rest will cut to the explosion. The GoPro shows an impressive blast, but far less shrapnel. The grenade has far less hull metal than the pineapple grenade, so it won't throw as much shrapnel. The Kronos shows a whole new aspect in the detonation. 
The stick end gets propelled into a thousand pieces outward, and you can see the mount get split apart. A really impressive demonstration. Not much was left of the mount though, mostly splinters. We walked around but we couldn't find the stick end pieces. No matter, we were just happy the test worked and produced a great demonstration of our prototype for a future video on the stick hand grenade. Now let's move up to a significantly bigger charge, say a tremor style pipe bomb. We had the weapons lab guard it while we prepared the range yet again. We put the T-post back up as before to string up the pipe bomb. So much fun. This time we placed them further apart as we don't want to ruin them. We're running low as we've blown up a few over the years. We placed fresh line across the T-post and strung up a pipe bomb charge loaded with 750 grams of ammonol and boosted it with a high explosive additive to increase the net detonation velocity. Let's see how it performs. This camera angle shows an impressive shockwave from the blast. The high explosive additive to the ammonol improves its performance significantly. The Kronos shines here as you can see the shockwave traveling across the ground from the explosion. What is also impressive is watching the grass debris get stirred up, followed by the brief shake of the camera from the shockwave hitting it. The grass was flattened into a rough circle around the blast. A new way to make crop circles perhaps. You can expect it in the sequel, Signs 2, Explosive Boogaloo, written by M. Night Shyamalan and directed by Michael Bay. So you know it's going to be bad. You can see the trend of escalating charges in this video. We obviously are going to go big for the final charge, so... Voila! Les pièces de resistance. <laughs> the pressure cooker bomb. So next up, we're going to be demonstrating a pressure cooker bomb. Now, surely there's going to be someone on the internet clutching them pearls. Be like, oh my god, they're, they're so terrorism. Oh, it's so bad. But we're doing this right here just to show y'all what it is and to calibrate, well, not calibrate, but show off our new high-speed camera. So if any of y'all get all worked up about it, don't waste your time contacting the Houston FBI or ATF office. They've already, they already know who we are. They've heard about it. If you want to report us, make sure to call the Royal Canadian Mountain Police and let them know that there's a bunch of yahoos down there in Texas building bombs kind of thing, eh? So anyways, let's get on to the boom. We loaded the pressure cooker with 3 kilos or roughly 6.6 .6 pounds of ammonal explosive. Then we mounted it on the new block so we can film it without obstruction. This piece is going to really kick up a ton of dust and debris, so we wanted a clean shot before it gets occluded by the dust cloud. But is it higher sp indirectly sponsored terrorism? You know, for someone to think that we're indirectly sponsoring terrorism, that's assuming that we have money, which is something we obviously don't. Yeah, remember us on Patreon. Help us have some baller cash so that I guess we could send it to Hamas or whatever. Once we wired it up, we got back to our firing position so we can kick off the grand finale. Right. Slowing down this wide angle shot shows how impressive and large the blast was. You can briefly see the shockwave traveling across the ground. Sorry for the dark spot on the side here as the blast shield got moved around a bit. Fortunately, it doesn't include the view too much. Good thing too as this was the money shot. The shockwave is clearly visible soaring across the ground. Just like with the pipe bomb, the shockwave can be seen shaking the camera ever so subtly. Barely noticeable when played back at full speed, but here it's very obvious. So far, we are loving the performance of this camera. It will provide us with a ton of solid data and great video for everyone to see. Here is ground zero after the blast. You can see a very distinct circle around where the pressure cooker blew its top. The video doesn't convey nowhere close to how it felt when it went off. Three kilos doesn't sound like much. Lindsay Lohan can put that down in a day, easily, but it's a good deal of explosive to set off in one whack. Here's all that is left from the pressure cooker. A few shards of aluminum, and a small hole where it was originally located. Well, that was a hell of a bang. We yeeted the 
pressure cooker and also the stand on it. We can't find any of it. Here are some little pieces of fragments I found about 50 to 60 meters out. Just little pieces like that. You definitely wouldn't want to get hit by that coming at you from that explosion. And it made a hell of a bang that we could actually hear it. We're in a little bit of a valley right now. We could actually hear it echoing around. And so Jake did a hell of a job making that ammonol explosives that we filled it up with. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. And again, remember, if you're gonna call the cops, stop calling the Houston FBI office and the Houston ATF office office. They're tired of hearing about us. Make sure that you call the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. That's the folks to call if you're going to call the cops on us. Also, hey, for the 1,000th comment, we're going to send a prize to y'all. So make sure you put your comments down there. We do read those. We've got a lot of videos that we're working on based on some of y'all's comments. So we'll see y'all next time here at Ordnance Lab. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. Hit subscribe if you want to see more. And stay tuned for another episode here at Ordnance Lab.